Patreon sponsor Faceman chose the subject of this week's episode, which I thought was a fitting one for the Basics' third anniversary month. So let's journey back to the beginning of the universe and the birth of the Transformer race, with the Basics on Primus, the god of the Transformers. Primus was an original character created by writer Simon Furman and artist Jeff Anderson for the Transformers comic published in the United Kingdom by Marvel. He was the God of Light, a cosmic being from the dawn of time who was the protector of all life. Designed to resemble Autobot leader Rodimus Prime, he debuted in 1988, in issue number 150 of the series, in a story which revealed the comic book origins of the Transformers. In previous years, the Transformers animated series had told an origin story of its own, in which the Cybertronian race had been built by the alien Quintessons and programmed by the megacomputer Vector Sigma. But for the comic, Furman crafted a separate, very different storyline, to which Primus was central. Billions of years ago, Primus fought to defend the universe against his evil opposite, the dark god Unicron. Unable to defeat Unicron physically, Primus was forced to lure his enemy into a trap that sealed both of their life forces inside barren asteroids. But though imprisoned, Unicron wasn't defeated. Over time, he used his cosmic powers to reshape his asteroid into a transforming metal planet, and began to menace the universe once again. Emulating Unicron's tactics, Primus used his own powers to reshape his asteroid into the metal world of Cybertron, and from the planet gave birth to the Transformers, robots who could change shape like Unicron did, who could fight Unicron in Primus's stead, each one given life by a small fragment of Primus's own vast life force. Primus's mind then went into hibernation deep inside Cybertron to prevent Unicron from mentally sensing its location. But before doing so, he bestowed upon his creations the Matrix, a receptacle for his life-giving power, which they could use to create more of their kind while he slept. When Furman took over writing duties on the American Transformers comic book in 1989, he retold this story in its pages for American audiences, and then continued the saga of Primus in what became one of the comic's most celebrated storylines. When a teleportation accident transported a group of Autobots and Decepticons to the core of Cybertron, they discovered the massive face of the hibernating Primus. During the group's battle, Primus was struck by a stray energy blast, and awoke with a primal scream that echoed across the universe, alerting Unicron to his location. Possessing the Autobot elder Emirat Zaron, Primus gathered the Transformers to prepare for Unicron's coming, but when Unicron arrived, they were all paralyzed with fear, forcing Primus to again battle his eternal enemy directly. With the majority of his power now residing in the Matrix, Primus was no match for his old foe, and was destroyed. But Optimus Prime, galvanized by Primus' sacrifice, was then able to use the power within the Matrix to obliterate Unicron. In the 1990s, online fandom generally came to consider the comic's cosmic Primus-based origin for the Transformers superior to the Quintesson origin from the cartoon, and this popularity would lead to it being revisited and reused by much new media in the years to come. This began subtly, with Primus being referred to by name several times in the Beast Wars cartoon in the late 90s. Primus help us all if that thing survived. But after Unicron made a dramatic return in 2002's Transformers Armada, Primus soon returned to prominence alongside him. He was central to the story of the 2003 toy line Transformers Universe, gathering Transformers from across the multiverse to fight Unicron's army of evil. He featured in comic books from Dreamwave Productions and the official convention Botcon, and a toy of him was even released, a golden chrome recolor of the Generation 1 Rodimus Prime toy, available only as the prize in a contest held through the Japanese guidebook Transformers Generations in 2004. Most notably though, Primus made his TV debut in Armada's 2004 sequel, Transformers Energon. 
With this new series came a new origin for Primus and Unicron. In this continuity, the pair were brothers, created as a pair of transforming robotic planets at the dawn of time by an extra-dimensional entity known as the One, for the purpose of exploring the newborn universe, only for the power-hungry Unicron to turn to evil. To aid him in his efforts to stop his brother's crusade to wipe out all life, Primus birthed from his planet mode 13 robots, the first Transformers, who succeeded in defeating and banishing Unicron. Awakened in the present day when the human Kicker Jones stumbled into his chamber at the heart of Cybertron, Primus appeared throughout Energon as a disembodied sphere of light, helping to guide the Autobots as they fought to prevent the resurrection of Unicron. In the series finale, he trapped his evil brother's life force within a sun made of pure Energon. But sadly, in the 2005 sequel series, Transformers Cybertron, Unicron's evil caused this sun to collapse into a colossal black hole that threatened to consume the universe. The series followed the Transformers' efforts to locate the Cyber Planet Keys, four long-lost fragments of Primus's power hidden away on Cybertronian colonies across the galaxy, in order to restore Primus's full power so that he could close the black hole. The series marked the first time that Cybertron itself was shown transforming, like Unicron, from planet form into Primus's colossal robot mode, and a huge figure of the character was released in the Cybertron toy line. As part of this return to prominence, Hasbro introduced a new concept that redefined Primus's very nature. Through various pieces of tie-in media, they established that across all the infinite different Transformers universes, there was only one Primus, a singular being who existed in every reality simultaneously. Though he had different forms and histories in each world, with different accounts of exactly how he created Cybertron and the Transformers in each reality, the Primus of the comics and the cartoons were all the same character. A multiversal singularity, a fundamental cosmic force who embodied the concepts of order and goodness, just as Unicron embodied evil. This in turn meant that, by definition, the Primus origin story was the true origin story for the Transformers in every reality. Even in series where Primus didn't appear, or where someone or something else was credited with creating the Transformers, the implication was that his invisible hand was at work, silently acting through objects that, like the Matrix, were conduits for his life-giving power, such as the AllSpark. Particular effort was made to rewrite the Quintesson origin story from the original cartoon in order to incorporate Primus into it, with both Botcon's Transformers Universe comic book and Japan's Transformers Kiss Players retroactively explaining that Vector Sigma was one of these conduits, and that the Quintessons had used the computer to bend Primus's power of creation to their will so that they could mass-produce the Transformers to be their slaves. KISS players further declared that the Cartoon Universe's version of Primus was the same character as the Oracle, an ancient robot who had appeared in the cartoon episode Call of the Primitives, whose physical form had been destroyed by Unicron, and whose life force now resided within Vector Sigma, which he could transform into a body for himself in times of need. Primus's only major appearances in the years that followed the introduction of the multiversal singularity concept were brief ones, in the interconnected media of the Aligned continuity, notably 2010's War for Cybertron video game, in which he spoke through the core of Cybertron to bestow the Matrix upon Optimus Prime. However, by this point, Hasbro had begun to backpedal on their decision, having concluded that they didn't want any new stories they told about Primus to be constrained by the rules of old ones. Within a few years, this led to the idea of multiversal singularities being formally abandoned, 
In 2015, the Transformers Collectors Club published a comic that saw the power of the Star Saber used to eliminate singularities from existence, making it so that every universe's version of Primus was its own distinct entity again, leaving the character free to be depicted however creators liked. While this change notionally means that new series can potentially depict the Transformers as once again having different origins unrelated to Primus if they want to, most stories that have touched on the concept in the years since have continued to feature or at least refer to Primus in his traditional role as the creator god who dwells within Cybertron, indicating that for now that deeply ingrained concept is going to remain the standard origin. However, one series did take an especially unusual new approach to the character, IDW Publishing's Transformers comic books. In IDW's universe, legend claimed that Primus was the head of a pantheon of five gods known as the Guiding Hand, who were wiped out when Mortalus, the god of death, turned against them. But this was only a legend. In reality, the origins of Cybertron and the Transformers in IDW's universe were a total mystery, because the real Primus wasn't a god at all. He was just the first Transformer to emerge from the planet in its primeval past. Primus possessed the ability to generate life-giving crystals from his body, and he transformed into a device that could fuse these crystals together, through which he created the Matrix. He and the next four Transformers to emerge after him became the Guiding Hand, the leaders of the Transformer race. But when one of the group, Adaptus, sought to wage war on other planets, the others opposed him. Outmatched, Adaptus escaped by blasting Cybertron with an electromagnetic pulse that wiped the minds of the planet's entire population. As society rebuilt itself, faint memories of the Guiding Hand inspired the legends, while the Hand themselves, with no knowledge of who they had once been, adopted new identities, and Primus became Rung, a gentle, bookish, unassuming robot who took up a career in psychiatry. Now, of course, readers didn't know any of this when Rung was introduced in 2010. As far as the audience was aware, he was just an ordinary original character created by writer James Roberts and artist Alex Milne, his name a pun on that of famous psychiatrist Carl Jung. From 2012, Rung appeared as a regular cast member in IDW's More Than Meets the Eye series, serving as therapist for the crew of the starship Lost Light. And over the years, an air of mystery grew to surround him. Nobody could figure out the purpose of his long-forgotten alternate mode, and as an ongoing side effect of the electromagnetic radiation he had absorbed, others often had difficulty even remembering his name. It wasn't until 2018 that Rung's true identity as Primus was revealed and he regained his memories. To stop an evil planet-sized robot created in the image of the false Primus of legend, Rung willingly sacrificed his life by pushing his matrix-making abilities to their limit, expanding all of his energy to create 12 matrices that his crewmates then used to deactivate the gigantic imposter. How the Transformers franchise will handle Rung in the future remains to be seen. Will he continue to be Primus Incarnate? Or will new versions of the character just be ordinary Transformers? The latter approach seems to have been the one taken by 2019's War for Cybertron Siege toyline, in which a toy of Rung was released that reimagined his Matrix-making alternate mode as a cerebral circuit scanner. But as for future series, We'll just have to wait and see. And those are the basics on Primus. Thanks to Faceman for sponsoring this episode. Tell me about your preferred origin story for Primus and the Transformers in the comments. If you like this video, subscribe for more Transformers history and lore. And if you can, consider supporting the series on Patreon.